Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the second part of the SQL injection attacks and in this particular video we'll be continuing with the previous SQL injection attack only that this time we will be looking at the other elements we had spoken about like using information schema to retrieve data. So when you're performing your attack we would still have our regular union select however at this point in time we would like to retrieve more information now we do not know what where this information really is but then it would be easier to just get it from information schema which is data about data in order to do this we can first we can structurally look at it so every database starts at we have a database, the database contains tables, tables have columns and columns have data. So in that same format or rather that same fashion because we are dealing with relational databases, we will attempt to retrieve this information. We already know what the database name is which is here from the previous injection and we can retrieve this just as a reminder using the database function. So we'll say submit. So that comes here and we can see the database name. Uh, as we also said, we can ensure our injection is a bit more efficient by having the and zero so that it's in a readable place. Now, since we already know what the database name is, we can try concatenation. So here we will get the field called table name and we will retrieve this from information schema within a table called tables. So within information schema dot tables, so this is this table called tables contains information about the database. And in regard to the database, we can get information about the actual tables within that database. So where the table schema is the current database. As you can see, knowing environment variables is very important because it makes your work quite easy. So we could have just typed the database name there, but then it's easier to just tell it to check using that. And as you can see, it returns three tables. So initially, we didn't know about all these other tables. We only saw this table, which is called courses, which shows the courses here by item code. But right now we see there's a users table and a comments table. We can try read a table we didn't have initial access to, but in order to do that, we would attempt to get information about that table. This is in regard to columns. So we will go back to our string, sorry. So moving back to our string, we will still go again and perform our group concatenation. But this time, what we want is the column name. And as you guessed it, we're still going to go to information schema. And the table is columns. As you can see, the names are really easy to remember where the table name is our current table. So we wanted to read users. There. So we'll just do that. And there we have it. So we can see the username, the password. That is, those are the columns which are available. So as you can see, we are breaking down all this information from information schema. Initially, we were reading the tables which, con which are contained in the database. Now we are narrowing down to the columns. So now that we have this, we already know 
which fields we want so we can pick so we can basically just pick the ones we want so let's say we want to read the username and the password so we will come and still perform our injection as expected but this time now as you see concatenation is really nice because instead of having to split this we're going to just retrieve the username and password from one column now what you're seeing in the middle here the 0x3a 0x it means read this as a hexadecimal value 3a is still hex but for space this is just as we just want to create a separator so what happens is when you create a separator when you create a separator we we at least have a neat view of the data now this information will come from users which is the table so when we submit that as you can see we have sorry it was a colon so we have the username a colon as the separator and a password so as you can see here is the password sorry this is the password it seems like an md5 hash there's another user again in their password and the likes so we'll have all the users of the database as you can see this is really very dangerous however we said that these are not the only things you can do when it comes to using mysql so another very interesting thing is knowing some of these functions so let's use one called load file and we can attempt to read a file from the file system so you can try read the etc password file and here the load file function simply tries to read and then there's when you want to write to the file system there's an into dump file so it really depends on what you want and we'll submit that and there we have it we read the etc password file as you can see this gets very dangerous and some of the mishaps that really cause this uh, could be seen as input validation which is one of the key ones so the field for search here is passed as is there is no validation done on it so before any any processing is done it should have been fixed but then it's not and then another thing this code allows for sql injection into the query because again it just sends it as is the statements are not prepared and we'll look at what this means and then again errors are displayed to us so that made it very nice for us and these errors are actual detailed exceptions rather than custom errors that wouldn't give us the information we really wanted this would have made it harder for us to perform the sql injection attack there's another bit that you would check from a white box perspective which is whether the errors are actually logged it would be good to just log any errors at least um, which would be a good indicator if you are reactive that an attack has happened in the next video In the next video we will look at how to prevent this SQL injection attacks and we'll look at some of the strategies that are available to us in order to perform the same thank you